I came here because my choice was simple. Live or die. My species is dying. Why are you telling me this? You are vital to the mission. Go. Take him. Now. Hoop fans, the newest offer from DraftKings is just too good to pass up. New customers can bet just $5 on any team and get $150 in free bets if they win. It's that simple. It's not every day you get 31 odds on any Hoops team to get a win. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also bet on NBA same-game parlays. Combine multiple bets for the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. As you know, we're running an all-the-smoke parlay each week for the rest of the playoffs. Head over to DraftKings Sportsbook app to check out who we're riding with. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code SMOKE. Bet just $5 on any pro basketball team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook. Welcome back to another edition of All the Smoke. Jack, what's good? Cooling. Tough day yesterday for us. Long day, but I enjoyed the Cali weather. We got to just kick back, smoke. Be good. Brothership, uh, brotherhood. Yeah, got some sleep. It wasn't actually a bad day. I enjoyed it. I did too. I was so tired already. Yeah. But today. We're back at it. We just got done doing hot boxing. Y'all didn't know we're neighbors. We didn't know we're neighbors. Shout out to the champ, who kid. Tell, tell some Pac stories. I've always wanted mm -hmm. to ask you that shit. I should have saved this for all the smoke, but fuck it. So Tupac, <laughs> listen, I'm locked up until around 93. It's maybe 94, and I got out pretty soon, and Tupac went in. He comes in this place in the end. This is all white supremacy. This is your, you've been locked up in the end. No, I ain't been, been locked, locked up. up you've been locked up. As soon as he comes in, everybody starts applauding, mm -hmm. clapping up and applauding. Like, hey, stop, sit down, stop, stop, stop. You know, the guards are saying that shit. And um, he was who? He was a force. If he loved you, it was all love. Mm -hmm. But um, if he didn't like you, he'd look for B sometimes. Mm -hmm. He wanted you to know he was there. Mm -hmm. His music is timeless, but they got like a timeless piece of art here. Like. Everywhere I go, out of like in Africa, Europe, how was Tupac? What was Tupac right. like? Right. Everywhere, all over the world. There's a powerful painting yeah, right this there. This is what he wanted. He just wanted to be a martyr. Iron Mike. We're going to get Mike. We're going to do some shit with Mike. But we got a special guest here. Uh oh. My guy. Fam. Them, them feet was working. Mr. Popcorn pop. Mr. Fingers. Popcorn pop. Y'all never watched this dude. Just go back and watch YouTube's of him putting his fingers on people in the way from Shaq to me. Nate Robinson, the way they'll they'll squeal when his strong fingers touch him. I'm an equal opportunity employer. He's a he just does this shit. It's crazy. Anyway, man, welcome to the show, six man extraordinaire Jamal Crawford. Appreciate it, family. How you doing? Yeah, officially welcome. Because before be so we did tense. you, we did I just you shake uh, his hand already. I'm good. A few times. We did you remote Maybe last time. Man. Last time we did you, uh, you hadn't officially called retirement. Since then, you have. Um, how did you come to that decision? It had got to a point, honestly, where, you know, you go through emotions where, like, you wake up some days like, damn, how am I not getting a call? To other days, like, man, I, I knew I could kill out there. To other days, like, man, I'm, I'm tired of waiting. And it got to that point, that roller coaster ride, where I finally found, when I said it to myself, I was like, how can I play for a team from home? And that's when I knew, I'm like, oh, okay, it's time. When you, when you try to play for a team without actually having to travel mm. and actually go, I'm like, it's time. And seeing my son and coaching him, and you know, I see you on the circuit all the time. I was like, it's it's time. And, and to do it on my birthday, and it was a little innuendo, because at the time, Adam's number 11, if you go back and look. And then it was like out the blue with a Hove lyric. I'm like, people are going to be asleep right now. They'll mm. get it tomorrow. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I felt like that was perfect for how my career went, because I always felt like I was under the radar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the way to, to announce it was like, 
how the best way for me. Thoughts about it? Like, are you, are you, I know you've moved on and we're going to get to the stuff you're doing, but just the bad, like, I feel like you're going to be the motherfucker that's going to be in the pro am. And once you, I don't know if you, you'll always be good up for the pro am, but you know, the local leagues or whatever. Like, how do you feel that, like, basketball's still very much in you and you're going to continue to play? Right. It's just not at the highest level no more. Yeah, that part is, you still have moments you're like, damn, like, especially watching. Like, dang, like, you're not in the NBA no more. I was in the NBA half my life. For real. Literally. like 20 years. Literally half my life I was in the NBA. So that part of it is is tough at times. But overall, I'm at peace. Like, I really am. I love, love doing TV that. stuff. I love coaching my son more than anything. So I got more time for those things. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I, that was my biggest worry. Like, okay, you love the game so much. You know, how's the transition going to be? But it's been unbelievable. That's when I feel you're at peace with it, when you can still be around it, but yeah. not... Like, okay, with, with with being in, you know, Jack still plays. You know, he goes through spells where he'll stop for a little bit, but he's back in action now. Like, I just don't have that energy. You don't have that I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the drive at all. Like, never do I go to, like, I can't wait to wake up and go play hoop tomorrow. Like, hell no, I just don't. Because I'm too busy, but that everybody is different. Right. You know what I mean? You got and a lot of shit just, going on, though, Yeah, bro. you do. But still, it's just... And make uh, it look easy, too, by the way. It's inspiring to watch both of you guys in this space, and then especially the stuff you're doing, ESPN, Kings... Showtime, obviously, yeah. all the smoke, just being everywhere. It's dope. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, like my goal is, yeah, our goal is, you know, to put our faces on as, as many quality platforms as possible mm -hmm. and then capitalize on something at the end of the day. Right. You know, Build. Come on, man. Yeah. Being retired, what does your normal day-to-day -day look like? Well, even, like, especially the last two years, I was always pick up and, and drop off duty. Like, I'm, I'm an Uber. Mm -hmm. I'm always taking my kids everywhere. But I enjoy it. I love it. Like, And they love it. They love it. Right. right, they look forward to it. And we have our little routines every single day when I take them to school. I come back home, work out. Yeah, like you said, I'm you're never... You're still looking pretty chiseled. Yeah, I'm, I'm always going to do that. It's yeah. just in me. Like, it's, <laughs> man, come on. Yeah. Don't right, start bro. to tickling early. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just in me, though. Like, I just love it. I'll always be in shape. I'll always be sharp. I'll always be game right. ready, even if there's not, no game right, to prepare right. for, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Just yeah. life. Just life in general. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if I have to show a young whippersnapper thing know. or two. You mm -hmm. never know. Yeah, so I'm I'm doing that, jumping on you know podcasts, whatever I'm doing. But it's really relaxed. Like it's it's weird because you can decompress, but you're absolutely about your family. My schedule is their schedule. Mm -hmm. Whatever their schedule is, mine's it revolves around that. You talk about possibly um, running the team, or you still got crossover Seattle. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Yeah, the pro am is just unbelievable because I mean you've heard from Isaiah, you've heard from different people who participate in it. You participate in it. It's something for the whole city that keeps them like going. It mm -hmm. gives us hope because Something we don't have the Sonics. Too. Right. We don't have the Sonics. We don't have none of that. Did you feel that when you played in it? Did you feel Super that energy? Super dope. Super dope. I mean, like I said, I think we talked about last time, but bro, you sold the gym out. Not sold, but 5,000 people at, at 12 for, at night. Yeah, at midnight for your uh, your pre-wedding festival. Yeah. Like, but they love basketball out there. We need to get Showtime basketball out there. Showtime basketball. What's Come on, up? man. Yeah. We're going to go out there and tell some BD, stories. Yeah, we got to get in Jamal to narrate. Like, oh, there's BD. Uh, BD's right on set. So we're going to make yeah, that happen. Yeah, he's right here. Yeah. Like, we're going to build you a show. He's here. Like, yeah. In the flesh. This will be a good time to welcome you actually to the Showtime basketball family. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, family. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Nah, bro. Nah, nah, you good. Go get some. Go ahead. Go ahead. You good. You good. You good. Go ahead on, bro. Go ahead on, bro. We good. But welcome. I mean, obviously, you spoke of media. Let's, you know, speak about, you know, how that came about. Out and and you know how how our you know this this fan base will be seeing you more here. I think as far as like just in the media space with COVID and everything, I did a lot of podcasts and stuff from home. So I jump on the podcast, no matter how mm -hmm. big or small it was, I was available for everybody. Right. I was like cool, yeah. and I just found myself enjoying talking the game because right. when you're talking, you're teaching it, right? Facts. Like people are, are young. What, this is what people don't know. I don't mean to cut him off, but what people don't know is this: what he did before every yeah. game and layup line. <laughs> Listen to me. The same way he talk about games and talk about different players in the basketball today, he did this in layup line in my ear every game. Every this game. is what we're going to do. This is what we should do. I'm taking them here. This is what I'm going to do to them. You, do you smell a popcorn, Jack? Because it's popping. Yeah. This is all the stuff he used to say. Real talk. And, Real and talk. And looking back, like, that's what it was. Like, I, I was kind of destined for this space, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Like, even when I do interviews, I flip it, not knowing I'm flipping it, just asking them questions because mm -hmm. I was interested in knowing. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, the space, I'm loving it. Um, Showtime has been unbelievable. You guys, it, it has such an authentic feel. Right. And I think that's what's different from everywhere else. The people that you have, you don't have to change. You can be mm -hmm. yourself. Wear a hat, wear a hat. You don't, you mm -hmm. don't. Right. Yeah. Whatever it is, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, And I think, come as you are. And mm -hmm. I think you're always your best self right. when you're that. Going to back to basketball, 20 years, a handful of teams. What team to you in your mind, give me your top three teams you feel like you play for? The Clippers, our team number one. Love City? Love City. City. Mm. Um, we gave away a chance at the championship. Yeah, I don't think we have. Have you talked about this? We haven't. Yeah, I haven't. Well, let's talk about this shit real quick. So we have Vinny Del Negro first. That's mm -hmm. when we mean you both coming to the uh, first year. We uh, came in together. Together, right? Yeah. Solid. Solid, fun as shit. Deep. Deep. I don't know if you remember this. There was a Sports Illustrated for Kids that came and shot us. Oh, yeah, for the bench mob. They said this is one of the best benches in history. It was me, you, L.O. Willie Green, Grant Hill. Ryan Hollins, Ronnie Turrio, Eric Bledsoe. Bledsoe. Damn. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah. Bledsoe. We forgot. That's a young bled. This yeah. is when they were calling him Baby LeBron. Yes. So we would finish games so oh. all the time for them. Like I remember oh. CP being mad one time. Yeah. And not in a way like of jealousy or nothing. He was like, man, our bench is so good. We haven't played fourth quarters in a minute. Eight yeah, games like almost straight, a month. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. Practices used to be dope. Like yeah. we were, we were at them motherfuckers, bro. Yeah, and just that opportunity when you look back at that and you look like, damn, there's no way in those years we were there we shouldn't have made one finals. I'm not saying we should have won it because you take a little right. luck. And Jack, you're a champion. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a champion too. But like, there's no way we shouldn't reach the finals. Yeah, we were the best team in the league, maybe for one, you know, a year, a season, season or two. Yeah. Talent-wise. Talent-wise. And then you have the 2015 year when we beat the defending champs, mm -hmm. the Spurs. And then we get up 3-1 against Houston. And if you simulated that and replayed it 100 times on a video game, I think 99 times it worked in our favor. That was the one time it would. Go to the Western Conference Final against the Warriors. And who we had just beat. And PS5 said people forgot. So that's the, we were, yeah. the, before they went on their dynasty run, we were the last, the last team, team to, to beat them in a seven game series during the Sterling shit. Yeah. So I just feel like that was the best team. Oh, by the way, they're making a show, uh, Ramona Shelburne. Shout out my home, uh, Ramona Shelburne. They're doing a show on her ESPN podcast about the Sterling, the Sterling Fishburne, affairs. Right? Lawrence Fishburne is playing. Um, Doc. Doc. Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be dope. Who's playing you? I don't know. So, you uh, was there when I got traded to the Clippers? Yeah. yeah. I was hurt, though. I had a calf But anyway, I need to be a consultant on that. If, yeah. we, if we really want to make yeah, sure that you the Sterling be. Affairs no and the Lob City vibe was real, yeah, you, you guys need to holler at me for real. I got a song for the soundtrack, too. That's why I get Talk kicked out the league talking about it. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Back to what yeah. you were saying. Yeah, so that would be the best team. Are you talking about just like team as far as like chances of winning a championship Shit. or just fun? Both. Because we New had York. a lot of fun there, too. Yeah, in New York, I can't. I can't ever dismiss New York. It felt like you were on stage every time. And you were. You put on the you put on the show. And then I go play at the Rucker right afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it was like <laughs> I was really bridging the street to mm -hmm. the world's most famous arena. Mm -hmm. Off days, I'm playing in the park. Mm. When I'm like That's hard. one of the go-to guys on the Knicks, I'm playing in the park afterwards. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah. That's hard. Travel yeah, so they really, Cena. it was a different type of energy they had from, yeah, it yeah. was different. I mean, they, they but they were all fucking with you. You know, you, you had your little situation with Hove and everything. Yeah, yeah, well, now that, So when you're, because obviously we're a little older, but now that you're done and you're coaching mm -hmm. JJ and you're, we see each other pretty much every other weekend at these tournaments, obviously the kids recognize you, but I don't really know if they understand like how cold, cold like all the shit that they're trying to do or see, <laughs> the, like the, that was you. If I was born... 20 years later, oh, it would have been a problem. Mm. I would have been one of the faces of the league. Mm. And I'm saying that humbly speaking. Right. Like, just the way the style of play is. Yeah. Like, you see LaMelo throw it through his legs. Oh, you were doing that and going and dunking that bitch, too. And no disrespect to nobody, but I was shooting, not watching it go in, like, oh, 25 oh, yeah. years ago. Yeah. He said yeah. 25 years no, ago. No, no, like, 1996, no. for no, real. But, like, you guys were crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, it. I'm shooting, what not watching it go in then. But it wasn't time. There wasn't social media yet. No, it wasn't social media. But mm -hmm. it's dope because the players of this era show love. Got to show love. Yeah and, yeah, and say, you know, they watched us growing up. Yeah. So that's dope. Love to hear it. If they were going to make a statue of you with any one team, what would that be? Clippers. I spent the most time there, so it, it got to be. And the love that, like, the fans have for me, I'll, do, I'll take some crazy. You see me play, I'll take some crazy-ass shots. Failed mm -hmm. us out a lot. But Falling I missed some too, yeah. but they never on, got man. on me. They never, you know what I mean? Like they were always. We all with trusted me. you. 
Yeah, that was which, dope. which was dope because it was just a special vibe with that team. That was one of the first teams. It was like a family. I felt like real on and off the court. Yeah. yeah what do you think? Sure. What do you think stopped us? I'm not sure we we're mentally tough. If I'm being honest, no, nah, we weren't mentally we tough. We were that boxer who could we could throw knockout blows, but if we got hit, we wasn't technical. We was like, man, man, it was that. First of all, it was that we should did, and we're fighting each other or going against each other, and not going against the opponent. So mentally, if we'd have had that, especially in 2015, if we'd had that that real vet, like, yo, this is y'all's only chance to win a championship. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys looking like, oh, we're young, we're this, we're that. Nah, things change fast. We need that one vet to be like, mm -hmm. yo, this is the chance. If you want to go to champ championship, this is it. If not, it's over. Damn. What about you? What you think? I agree. I agree. Mentally tough, I think egos. Yeah. Guys kept getting better and, you know, some people were starting to get more shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of L.A. shit, you know what I mean? Commercials and ads and, and, and a lot. money making and, you know what I mean? You could do a 30 for 30 just on our team, for real. Yeah, no bullshit. And the, and the way we self-destructed in the playoffs every year when we had that, that clear run. You, you're breathing <sighs> heavy. So that, that no, tells you still I'm, weighs I'm, on I'm you. I have a stuffed nose, so oh, okay. it's through my mouth. It's still weighing on, it's still weighing on you a little it's, bit. It's the allergies. What stood out to you this year in the playoffs? A uh, player or who? The lack of shot creation stood out to me. Because mm. in the season, they'd be like, oh, this dude shoots 40% from three. But in the playoffs, he can't even get his own shot. Mm -hmm. So shot creation to me shows that it's still like at a premium. Even if you don't rely on that over the course of a season, he knows the plays. You know what it is in the playoffs. You know the mm -hmm. opponent's plays better, just as right, good yeah. as you know your own. Yeah. So what's going to separate that? Right, and so having that shot creation, I think, is still needed, especially for guys who are like, go get it, guys. You know what I mean? And some of those guys are in the league right now. Mm. Your opinion on the state of the league, two questions. Your opinion on the state of the league, and give me your top three favorite players right now. My opinion on the state of the league is it needs to get a little bit older. Like, mm. you need to have vets too in the young. league. I didn't learn to be a pro until I had pros around. Yeah. Like, remember everybody was like, man, Boston, they got to trade Tatum or Brown. I'm like, no, they don't. They right, need a like, vet that bro. they respect in there. Right. Imagine mm -hmm. having a DeMar DeRozan mm -hmm. that they respect. Like, yo, you need to do it like this. You can, you know, be part of the team and still get your shine, but you got to bring these dudes along. Somebody they respect, the Paul George type. Yeah. I'm not saying these guys specifically, but those type guys where the, those guys can look up to that and follow that blueprint and have achieved the things they want to achieve. I think that's what the league is missing. Own. But it's missing all around the league. Though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look what Isaiah Thomas did for Charlotte. Yeah. Right? Even though he didn't play as much as I'm sure he would and he could have, his his presence Ask the locker was room. a present. That's the locker room right. he was like. I mean, and I think that's where there's a disconnect with management sometimes. For sure. And then the not. second part of that, that, my three favorite players to watch, Jaws must see TV. Ooh. He's something, right? Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. I'm just going to do young players because who's playing? I'm like, I got to watch them. LaMelo. I love watching LaMelo. Mm -hmm. I think those two in particular bring a spice to the game. Like, it doesn't it's, it doesn't look like the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, dribble handoff. We know mm -hmm. this action's coming. It's like, what are they going to do next? But then also, too, just the antics or what, just who they yeah. are. You know, you see John and them dancing in the camera. Yeah. Like, my, that, that's new to the that's game. That's new. That, you know what I mean? You see LaMelo doing whatever he did. Like, all what they're doing. And I love it. Even John mocking Steph the other day. Yeah. Come on, man. Like, I love it. I love that energy. So those two, and I think, you know, Luca is just... <sighs> He's playing like he got headphones on. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Fam, he's at peace. He's at peace. I'll do what you You can't bother me. It's right. yeah. Luca. I'm Luca Magic. He's playing like he got headphones on. So on, those Luca. three, I would say, mm -hmm. like they keep you on the edge of your seat because you don't know what they're going to do. And being a creative, that's what I like to see. If you saw a franchise with one player, who would it be? Giannis. I thought I just, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. No, Giannis. He's, he's the right, like, at the point of his career, he's still dominant. He's at, he's not considered old, like he's he's driven to continue to be better. He has a certain humility about him, even though it's, it's he's such a force, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that humility is the reason why he'll always get better, why he'll always improve, why mm -hmm. he'll always expect more of himself and his team. So, Giannis. Mm. What's your uh, take on the international takeover right now? We're trying to be four tough in America. We need one, uh, don't uh, we? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Where we at? Damn. Um, you right. Yeah, it's, it's dope from the standpoint it's a global game. Like, when we were coming out, I was like, man, you better work on your game because there's somebody in Iowa right now who's working on their game. Yeah. There's somebody in Chicago. There's somebody in Texas or Cali working on their game. Now it's like, no, nah, there's somebody in China working on his game. Mm -hmm. So you better be ready. And so that part of it's dope. It's dope that it's a global game because 
Uh, when we played it, we knew that it was like, it was the best sport and we felt like that. But on the other side, it shows that for us, we we got some work to do. Mm -hmm. Like we really, they're, they're catching up. Someone said, I forgot who it was and I forget, I'm, I'm, I'm bad, I can't give you your credit, but someone said, when you're 14 and 15 overseas, you're playing against pros. When you're you're 15 in America, you're you're in seventh grade. And I took that as we're holding kids back a year or two to play with these little elementary school kids or, you know, real. And when they're that age overseas is playing against grown ass men. Matt, the thing that's crazy is that's this age though. Now they have trainers. We were kids, I played against grown men. We always played up. We always wanted to play up. Always wanted. I never wanted to. I was in eighth grade walking across the street to Del Campo High School playing against the 17, 18 year old kids. But I was really, I was the age I was 13 or 14. You know what I mean? Now I'm seeing 15 year old, you know what I mean? You're in AU now. Yeah. You see 15 year old uh, eighth graders like, bro, I was a sophomore in high school when I was 15. (laughs) And for us at that age, it was embarrassing. Yeah, you didn't you want to I mean? be down. You know what I mean? back, any of that. So it was like, my first trainer was the 40-year-old dude who was drinking a 40 in between runs. Yes, like, sir, no, you, you got to cut. You had a good no, one. you got to make this shot. You had a good you one. You had to sit two hours just to play one game with them. So that mm-hmm. was my first trainer. Like, he was teaching me how to play. No, you got to cut right there. You can't over-dribble. You now you're a grown man. You got to be physical. You mm-hmm. got to, like, so those were the first trainers. And that's what's missing. Because now we're trying to do it in reverse. Yeah. We want the 15 year old to go dominate a 12 year old and be like, look at me. <laughs> right. Yeah. What are we doing? Right. Right. And so that part needs to be cleaned up for sure. But I mean, that takes t- t- to me, like, why I coach the kids. You know, yeah. I mean? they're in the grade they're supposed to be. We're not going to hold back. We're just going to keep getting better. Because you went to where everybody dreams right. about. So you understand the big they picture. Think they're, yeah, they think there's you know I mean? a secret sauce. I mean, right. at the end of the day, I tell my kids because, again, like, we're the A's now. They're seventh grade, but I see kids with facial hair and I'm just like, like real, it's like, and I'm just like, bro, okay. And what the parents don't understand is it hurts that kid in the long run. Mm-hmm. Because when you're 18 it's, and it's you're It's being playing, handed to you right now. And you go through adversity, you're like, well, damn, I've always been the man. I've mm-hmm. always been bigger, stronger, How faster, older, whatever. Now my parents can't hold me, but you know And what it's mean? too late almost for them to yeah. have that adversity at that age when you've had such yeah. success. So I be telling our boys, like, it, like, so when you are all freshmen in high school, you want to play varsity, right? Well, you're going to play against 17, 18-year-old guys. So if, Get used you're, to if it. you're 11 and 12 now playing against 13 or 14-year-olds that say they're in your eight, your your class, you got to play them. And it takes Period. away that shock value when yeah. they see them for the first time, somebody's right. two or three years older. You yeah. know what I mean? <clears throat> Seattle, I love Seattle. Catfish Corner, you know that's my that's family. family. Yeah, that's family. family. That's and family. Jackson, yeah. Talk about. You have any bigger plans with with uh, Seattle crossover? Yeah, absolutely. Talk um, about it. We're already on video games. Uh, we did it. Actually, did a deal with Body Armor. Rest in peace, Kobe. Before mm-hmm. he was yep. passed away. But yeah. So we're always trying to to look at how to grow the league. Um, we're gonna look into. Showtime, Showtime basketball. basketball yes. Doing docs possibly coming yes. up there yeah. and just seeing what the feel of it and just kind of bringing our story to life. You know what I mean? I think it's, people know a little bit about it and know some things, some elements of it, but to bring it to life. But to really how many dudes have come oh out of that gosh. place. Oh my gosh, a so little it's place a, though. It's a, it's like a, it's you can cross weird. the whole town in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. I went to one high school with DeJounte Murray, Doug Christie, Kevin Porter, Nate Robinson. In the middle is Jason Terry, Peyton Siva, Aaron Brooks. On the other side, it's Brandon Roy, Jalen Noel, and this is in a 15, Will Conroy, this is a 15 minute span. So it's it's crazy to see. Um, I think per capita we're up there, and it's and it's more coming. Mm, yeah. Mm. Anything? Well, when, when the last time you had Cabbage Corner? I tried to go. <laughs> I tried to go uh, three weeks ago, but they were sold out of catfish. <laughs> Right. No, no. Hey, don't do me. <laughs> Get him. Right, that like joke was directed right. towards you. Like you ain't on the team bus right now. I know. Yeah. I, I know. I yeah, can't wait. We will go pull up though. Who's on the team bus? <laughs> right. Anything you heard about the Sonics? Any, yeah. any new news? So I heard about the hockey team coming probably two to three years ago. And in Seattle, since they left in 2008, since that was the last year, we'd be like, oh, five years, Sonics come back. Now it's really, I believe, is going to happen through expansion. But we need the hockey team first. And, and they're here. The Kraken's here. It's doing well. It's going to uh, be great fan base. Vegas and Seattle are the two coming on board? I could see that. And then maybe move Memphis to the east or something. Right? Like, I could see that. Mm-hmm. I'm just throwing it out there. Speaking into existence, on, I know yeah. nothing. So, yeah. yeah. What are you hearing about in. Paolo Bancaro? I um, coached him in the Allen Iverson game. Yes. He a problem. He's a problem. What's your, what's your take on him? Love him. I love his family because the, the, the family he comes from, like, he's him, his brother, his sister are going to be successful in whatever they do because they have a solid background. They have mm-hmm. solid footing. 
um, but he's a worker. Jim Rat loves to get better, humble. When you talk to him, he's still young in the sense of he wants to, he doesn't have all the answers. He's not yeah. thinking I'm a top pick. He listen. Okay, yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll apply that. And that part is dope about him. Whoever's getting him is going to get a, a franchise cornerstone. I love think it. He, think he number one pick? Depends on who's picking, but yeah, I yeah. can absolutely see him. Could be a number one. I remember Spencer Haas, shout out Spencer Haas. He used to tell me about him like yeah. in 9th, 10th grade, like there's this kid coming, he's Paulo, mm -hmm. he's Matt. Played he football could, too, Matt. Yeah, I know. He's, he's told football, me about yeah. him. No, I've, been following, I've been following little bro. And won a state championship first yeah. year. I've been following little Freshman. bro since a minute. And yeah. Spencer Haas is the one He's like, there's, he's, he's a pro. Watch, watch. You saw another young one in the game. DeJounte Murray, yeah. Did you, oh, you know what I mean? And yes. you knew he was cold thin. He had like 40-something in yes, that game. against me. Cooking. Look like an old, I look like an old OG yeah. that night. Yeah, and I was Ain't off gone. one already. Ain't I was gone. off yeah. a couple shots and some joints, and I was like, man, we really going to play back? I, I thought he was kind of fucking with us until I saw how many people were in there. I was like, oh, we're really about to play basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, <laughs> and you played well. Like your Adidas <laughs> on and everything. Left him there. <laughs> I picked him up as soon as you don't know that, though. Uh, one thing that I remember... Vividly, there you go. Stop. Get him. Stop. Get him. Stop. 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 You didn't know that, Zach. I'm just saying. You yeah. didn't know. He didn't know. One he thing I, your shoes on. Yeah, I kept sick, man. One thing I remember uh, while you were still playing was, because I would see you at the tournament, so I'd tell you, like, how fun it is coaching the kids. You got to oh, coach your sons, God. and you didn't really, you weren't really. God. You finally did that. It, tell us what that experience is like, being able to do that with your Matt, son, JJ. Matt, there's honestly, we have practice tomorrow. There's honestly. We got practice tonight. Do you? Yeah. How many times do you practice a week? Just once, if that. <laughs> we do three. Yeah, you guys are militant over there. Oh, man. We still nice, though. Film sessions. We still nice, though. quarters. We still, we going to number one. Where y'all at? Come see us. We want, we want they all the They got jerseys reversible. Ooh, talk Let's to them. Talk to them. Stack. I'm going to let stop, you make it right stop, there. I'm going to let you. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> no, I'm, it's the best thing ever. Right? It's nothing, like, I would rather do that than anything. Like, I, if you were like, let's go hoop. I can go hoop and still be pretty good, but I would rather do that. Right, and the what? kids will see where they go from point Come A to point on, B. Man. It's nothing. And I see you on the side, and I actually took something from you. You're always so calm. I'm like, damn, how's he that calm in a high intense game? I'm watching, and I'm like, because you may have parents, I'm mad, you know, they want to get into it just because you're you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going through that part of it, but there's nothing better in the world. And that's my favorite thing to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We got a tournament this weekend. So do we. We're getting what down. Are you playing? Uh, we're in Corona. <laughs> Shout out, uh, uh, <clears throat> hey, you, you see, he's trying you right now. I hear him. You, I'm used to this dude. He's on pace. Come on, hey, man. I'm, it's, it's, you know I'm that, catching it. Man. What Same I was going to say was, you know, we doing some basketball dads. You know, shout out, I got Tommy's here behind the scenes. Shout out, right Tommy Guns. Tommy Guns. So know. we do, we're going to bring this directly right to Dope Showtime footage. Basketball. But there's so many of us. It's, it's, it's me, you, I mean, J.R. Ryder. Will. Me, Will. Yeah, it's a bunch um, of them. Man, you see, you see dads. All the time out mm -hmm. there. Paul Pierce has been out there. It's it's they're all over the place. And it's dope because you know that number one, you're showing the dads in a different light. Mm -hmm. But number two, you're getting like you know the kids are getting good information. Right. Yeah. You know what right I mean? People. Like you know they're getting tossed the, the right way. Part. You see a lot in this AU yeah. space, and Jack, you've got kids in AU space. I mean, some of these motherfucking coaches have no idea At what they're doing. They they yeah, like, no. All they want to do is scream and all like you're not you're not teaching nobody nothing. That's what I'm so. like, you'll be able to play for anybody. You'll know terminology. You right. Know, you'll be able to play for anybody. You'll We're know giving everything. you professional mm -hmm. stuff at 9, 10, yes. 11, 12. So by the time Watch it comes. Film. Come on, man. It's a whole mm. process. Scout reports. Well, man, it was good to catch up with you. Always uh, always good to see you. Uh, you're part of the family now, so we're going to see you more Stat, often. Stat, what's up, man? I'm chilling, bro. All right. But before we get out of here, we got some quick hitters for you, fam. Let's do it. Favorite road crowd to silence. Ooh. Showtime. Oh, he's on with Showtime, but his nickname yeah. is Showtime. Yeah, and a, you, you can break that. You can break that story how, how I got prime time and you Showtime, because I don't think... Tell him. Tell him. You tell him. I'll let you tell him. You just guess you tell him. You tell him. No, you tell him. Okay, well... Popcorn is always popping before the game. Well, not always, but 7.30. Well, definitely <laughs> at 7. It. Yeah, uh, definitely at 7.30. Right. It's got to be fresh. Right, gotta before be fresh. They, right before they open the doors at the arena. Little butter? No, little they butter. open the doors are early. Yeah. yeah. You doing salt or no salt? Salt. Seasoning? No, uh, little Lowry's? Bit. I got you. You stuck. All right, go ahead. My fault. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> my fault. All right. Stop. My bad. My Every bad. game. My bad. My bad. My bad. Popcorn popping. Jack, it's showtime. So I start calling him showtime. So he start calling me prime time and tell him why he start calling me prime time. Well, tell him why you call me showtime. Because when it's time to turn the lights come on, the popcorn get to pop, and the showtime, he puts on the I show. On show. I called him prime time because obviously Deion Sanders, prime time. Yeah, shout out to Deion. The best of the best could do anything at any time, and Stack could get 20, but he could lock you up and let everybody know about it. So he was like 
prime time to me. I'm like, my offense, my defense stack. I ain't playing no D like that. But your, de <laughs> <laughs> your defense right now is admirable. I can't guard Kobe, but you're doing a good job of it. So I'm going to just, you know. So that's why I start calling well, it. We was prime, prime and showtime. Prime yeah. time showtime. Yeah. That's yeah. a good story. Favorite road uh, crowd to silence? Mm, I would say Utah. Mm. I would say you because they right there on top of you. They was just we saying feel you. Too. Yeah, I would say Utah. Say whatever. We Utah. feel you. Yeah, I say Utah. I, it's a high percentage of the league that's gonna say Utah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I say Utah. So sure. on the uh, top five crossover kings of all time, mm. give me you you plus four. Can I take myself off? Okay, I'll put myself on that you list. You, you want to be the sixth man of that list? Yeah, I'll be sixth man cool. of that list. Kyrie. Mm. Original Isaiah, because mm. that's who I grew up watching. Mm. Reason War number 11. White chocolate. Mm. Man, Say white it. chocolate was cold, wasn't it? Say he? that. Iverson. Can't forget AI. Mm -hmm. Chucky. Chuck. That's four? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with, I'm going to throw Mahmoud, my guy Mahmoud. Mm. Mahmoud. Yeah, I love him. Solid. And Nick the Quick, they can share a spot. Oh, Nick, yeah. And Nick Rod Cam. Strickland, them three. BD. And then BD and Steve. Steve Francis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Rod Strickland. There's a whole lot of them. Yeah, oh CP. my God, that's some great talent, man. Yeah. Biggest shit talker you ever faced? Ooh. GP. Gary Payton. And KG. Me and KG had like a real beef. I'm like, KG, you're KG. I'm just a rookie. We're not really supposed to be beefing. You ain't really <laughs> supposed to. But he, it's no on and off switch with him. It's yeah. all on all the time. But those two, and he didn't know at the time that he was one of my favorite players ever. Mm -hmm. Like, I love KG to death. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, those two, GP. KG. GP for sure. Uh, favorite shoes you ever hooped in outside the brand Blacks? Some 1983 high top shell tops. The 1998 summer, we all came out. I was wearing shell tops everywhere. And I was playing them until my boy David Hudson, shout out D. Hud, he threw them in the bushes, so I couldn't wear them no more. Not the shoes you have with the Clippers? <laughs> Tell them that story, man. What were those called? Probably brand Black. Brand Black. Brand Probably that was you. Them you shoes were trash. Yeah. They probably was worse than them. Hey, hey. so they brought a, a shoe deal that, to actually both of us, and uh, Jamal went with it. But I have bad <laughs> toes, so I, like, I, I tried it, I wanted to do it, the money they offered was cool, I was gonna do it, but I, I I couldn't Your feet I couldn't do my yeah, yeah I couldn't do it to myself. Every little so fam took the deal, got his little deal, had some merch with it, got some bread for it. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> These motherfucking shoes <laughs> got so tight that like you know like when you're a little kid, you see the kids that'll tie the shit and they'll make both sides yeah. come and and still the strings are like this long. You have to like eight like triple knot them. <laughs> That's what the the shit used to do. And it was, it was just, touching. You used to be like, fam, your shoes all right? <laughs> yeah, right. Can your shoes breathe? That was so <laughs> fam, your shoes breathe? It was like no middle space at all. Like the sides would touch. They was it touching. Was, what? It was a fun run, though. It was tell a fun us, run. Tell us. I just didn't want you to. I, thought I you know, I, I know why you yeah, got up. Yeah. It wasn't a shoe display. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a shoe display. Um, no, nah, they came to me with a deal. And I was like, man, I ain't dreaming about having my own shoes. Right. So I'm like, you know what? I got I to gotta take this deal, regardless of how they feel or how my feet felt after mm -hmm. but yeah i mean it was dope from i saw the vision and i grew up loving alan iverson he went reebok so at the time reebok was kind of an off brand it wasn't nike or adidas mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i'm like that kind of i'm like all right i'll do it right so that was that and i want to change my answer I actually s dots because anybody who score 50 in s dots is a bad boy You're so i'm saying boy. yeah i'm saying so. dots. best teammate you ever had besides me Besides you and Stack? Yeah. I mean, besides you and Matt? Yeah, besides me. I know I'm definitely up at the top of that list. Man, I'm so definitely. many teammates, I know I am. bro. I'm going to say one I don't really say often. Malik Rose. Good dude. Because he was such a pro. Good like, dude. Such a, shout out Malik. Yeah, shout out Malik. He was such a, a pro. Mm -hmm. and We were struggling with New York, but he came from such a winning pedigree. I used to always pick his brain about the Spurs. I won a championship with Malik. Yep. That's Absolutely. That's my guy. He was a Favorite jersey, me, uh, jersey you wore? Rainer Beach. Ooh, number top 23. Top. That's the only jersey I got on my own. And my, oh, it's not. I'm lying. But that's, that's my favorite jersey, for sure, because that was the most fun I ever had playing in high school my whole life. Yeah. Top three defenders you ever faced? Besides you two, Tony Allen, Kawhi, because hmm. mm. he's just super solid. The like, claw. he's not going to beat himself. He's, you know, And, they, and they let, when you put it down, they let him slap all this shit. All it don't that. even matter. There's so. no foul. And then um, I'm going to say Bruce Bowen. Mm. Yeah. Top three toughest matchups that I had to for guard? you to guard. You know, I ain't put no damn D, but I'm gonna say uh, <laughs> Kobe, Iverson, D. Wade. 
Them three. D Wade was a motherfucker. Have you ever been on? I'm gonna ask you a question. Have you ever been on sure. the end of one of his crossover fall moves, like making somebody fall and he kick it to you? Yes, we yeah, he did that a lot. I got to see it firsthand. He crossed Ray Allen and made him fall and kicked it to me for the three in Boston. Yeah, it was, was just, just it so was poetic. Talking, you was talking shit. It was poetic it. too. Mm -hmm. oh, get your bitch ass up. I was with him with the with the <laughs> one that and, was and he laid like Jesus. Yeah, for real. yeah he did. He I did. Was he with the, the floor. I, I was with the one where he made uh, Wes Matthews just give up. In Portland. Oh, yeah, I see that He crossed yeah, him, he crossed him back hand, and then brought it back. And then he just hands said, up. And you know me, I came bullied Shout in. West, and, yeah. yeah, of course. West, I came in bullied he, was, he was in Seattle when y'all was playing Shout in Portland. Shout out West, but like a boxer, I felt like he was going to run up. I and mean, he's a hard playing dude. Mm -hmm. And when he stumbled, then I felt, I said, he's coming up. Got to and him. when I did it, and he went to her like, this is some bullshit. Now what's going on here? Yeah, you got the call. Yeah, he gave up. How many counters this motherfucker got? Yeah, this is the bullshit. So Gave up. For sure. Well, Jamal, man, it's good to catch up. Again, Always. welcome to Death Row. Yeah, welcome to Death Row. It's an honor to have you. Looking forward man, to... Man, this is so legendary. Yeah, bringing Showtime. Oh, yeah, you just, you're on stage, This baby. is so yeah. legendary. I'm glad we got hey, to but, have you uh, in person. Hey, but all my favorites. Huh? Tickling is not in your contract, bro. Yeah. That was in your NBA contract. That for free. Nah, nah, it's not that. You nah, do. Yeah, nah, you do. Nah. Think about growth. Think about it. That's a clause. That's, nah, 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 that's, nah, hold on, hold on. Make, no, hold on, hold on. Look at it. Hey, Before you come over, right, I'm just saying, just Showtime, stay you can just stay there. Showtime, up. basketball, I YouTube. Hey, hey, look, hey, you say, hey, 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 This season, I've only invited an elite group of competitors. This will be your biggest competition yet. You don't come to a challenge and not be ready to win. This is the most cutthroat game. Gone are the days of men running the game. Only shooting stars break the mold. The Challenge All-Stars, now streaming exclusively on Paramount+.